When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stop going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish, the podcast that almost didn't happen this week. If you're new to the show, uh, you should know that this episode is weird. It is not our standard format, but we had a really hard week here at Gayish, and um, for a while there, we were tempted to just pull the plug on this week's episode, hoping that all of you would realize that we're just human and would forgive us. But we've managed to put something together that I think is important, and I know Kyle does too, and May is Mental Health Awareness Month in the United States, and we thought that it would be important for us to uh, show that mental health is something that a lot of people struggle with, and all three of us on the show are, uh, especially this week. So Kyle and I, we, we, we talked briefly on Sunday, the day after the live stream, and things seemed okay. Uh, Kyle had been, uh, I had, I had seen him struggling, um, for a while and, and figured, figured that, uh, that he would reach out when he needed to. And, uh, but there was r- radio silence there until Wednesday. And it's pretty rare that he and I will go three or four days without talking. And I was, I was worried and I, I started, started escalating my, Hey, are you okay? <laughs> messages to him. And then on, on Thursday, he, he finally sort of popped his head up out of the water and said that he was having a harder time than usual, which I already knew. And uh, yesterday, Tuesday, Kyle reached out and asked if we could hang out in person. And we struggled a little bit with what to do with that here on, on the show because we want to be good role models and we want to demonstrate um, proper social distancing and following the rules and strictly speaking getting together was going to be breaking the rules but we talked through our exposure people that we have seen and also to a certain extent our state order Washington state order says that it's okay to break social distancing to care for somebody who is sick and we, we had a conversation about like, Hey, does should mental health count? Like if somebody's going through major depression or any other sort of mental health problem, then, you know, is that, is that okay to get together? And we decided, we decided that the, the risks were eclipsed by the benefits here. So we got together last night. So what you're going to hear is our conversation and we, we didn't set up the recording equipment. Um, we didn't want to have to wear headphones and have microphones in front of us just to have a chat about our lives and what was happening. So what you're going to hear is just how we talk to to each other. It was, um, we were uh, maybe a little aware that we were recording, but, um, you know, it was, it was mostly just, uh, two friends trying to be there for each other. And the sound quality is shitty because it's on a handheld recorder instead of our normal high quality studio rig. And there's a lot of pauses and there's a lot of pouring wine noises. And there's a lot of time to think, um, that things that we normally would edit out of a real show, but we think add to the conversation. And if it's not for you, that's fine you can move on to the next episode. But if you get anything out of this, um, please, please let us know. And I hope that everybody out there is being healthy and and sane and cutting themselves some slack in all of this craziness. I should mention that if you or anyone that you know is struggling with suicidal ideation or suicidal thoughts, to call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. And now here is our conversation.
pay no attention to my recycling bin full of wine bottles. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> when you're there's something that I'm taking on my recycling. Sometimes it's just full of LaCroix, which that's cool. <laughs> but other times it's full of, like, my shame and bottles and stuff. <laughs> and I'm just hoping I don't pass anyone on the way into the recycling bin. Mm-hmm. Some slight variation of what you're saying. Sometimes when I take out my recycling and it's just, like, obviously an alcoholic lives here, <laughs> then I'm careful to make sure that none of the Amazon packages with my name and address are near the giant pile of bottles. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> Okay, when I legally dispose of things in boxes <laughs> that look like recycling, yeah. uh, I rip off or cover up my name on the package in case someone opens up the package, looks inside, sees that I'm trying to throw away five light bulbs. <laughs> Dude, I can't do it. You're not supposed to throw away light bulbs? No. Okay. Well, that's a thing that I didn't need to know. Oh my god, I think they, like, bleed into America. <laughs> they, like, they, like, I'm pretty sure they bleed into... I'm, okay, wait, are we talking now? Sure. Okay. Whatever. How are you, Mike? <laughs> uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like... Are you still working a shit ton? Yeah, working a lot. What? Are you not working tonight just to talk to me? Or no, no. I mean, I, I think I think if um, if you weren't here, would I be working? Yes, oh. but but don't make that stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> this is also like you know that thing like when you like. get really super, super ass busy. And then it kind of stops being busy or as busy, but you're still like fucking working like a motherfucker. And then like, you actually can get ahead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's if, like right, right before the steam wears off. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. But, but if like, yeah. if I, if I like, take a, if I take a, like a, a step back and it's good, it's good that I did. Like, I don't need to, I don't need to be kicking my own ass right now. Mm. So, uh, well, good for you. I also, um, did an internal survey. Have I told you this already? Mm. Did an internal survey and they asked everybody about like their mental health. Like, how are you doing? <laughs> and, um, is this recently? Is this post This is like a week ago. Oh, okay. And then like the day after we all submitted it, they came back and they said, okay, clearly people aren't doing so hot. So everyone... <laughs> Take Friday the eighth off. That's this Friday. Yes, yeah, this Friday. And cool. they said they said not only not only that, but um, you're forbidden from working. You'll there will be consequences if you send emails or respond to Slack messages or check things in. We're serious. Fucking take the day off. Well, that makes me feel a little bit bad for like watching Grey's Anatomy for sixteen. That's what I do for sixteen hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so at, the, so at this pace, you'll be done with it like next year sometime because there's so much of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> uh, someone was like, oh, how much Grey's Anatomy do you think you watch in a day? Like two hours? And I was like, oh boy, <laughs> we are on different, we are in very different places. That is not the the scale at which I am measuring things. Yeah. Um, I mean, Chris, Chris and I watched... Um... We're in the middle of season three of Shit's Creek, and I think that we've watched it together like four or five times. Mm. Just four or five times of several hours apiece. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I have to tell you, talk to you about how I'm doing. Yeah. Now I feel stupid about feeling bad. You know what I mean? Like, I, do, I do know what you mean. It's like, I'm fine, but that's not true, but like... I don't know. So, like, yeah, the the what's been happening since maybe the beginning of this year, since I've been on new medications, it's been generally very good, um, has been just going back and forth between, like, depression and almost, um, I think they call it hypomania, uh-huh. um, but just, like, a not mania, have I told you this before, not mania, but a little bit of, like, 
a touch of the mania. Yeah. Um, huh. And that's been manageable because the lows aren't that low. They, you know, the, the cycles are just, like, then I get time. Like, I could, I could, like, before feel it kick in. And I was like, okay, great. Now I'm being overly productive, and now I'm going to get all my shit done. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, not the way we want it, which is why I'm, like, trying out a new medication and everything to, like, even that all out. But, like, I could get really excited for those times where I'm just like, okay, now I'm going to kick ass and do a bunch of stuff and be productive and whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, The past two weeks have not been that. I keep waiting for it, and I keep thinking, like, okay, this is the day when it all turns around, and it has not done that. So this is, like, a weird... I don't know, a place I've been in the past, like, week compared to, like, the past few months. Mm-hmm. Um, what does weird mean? What do you mean? How's your sleep? Um, you were struggling with sleep. Oh, God. You were struggling with sleep a lot. Yeah. Before, well, okay. like, because the wheels fell off the bus the last week. Mm-hmm. We both know that, and... And like we're we're figuring it out, and like, but even before that, yeah, you were struggling with that, and yeah, like, what? Uh, but I don't think I even have like a full picture, oh, except that you were available at weird hours and not available <laughs> at other hours, and I. Everyone says like, "Oh, my sleep schedule's off now." We're like, I don't know what day it is. I did not sleep last night. At all. So, I okay, when was the last time I slept? I slept at, like, until, like, s- maybe, like, 2 to 6 p.m. nap-ish kind of thing. Somewhere in there, like, a, a couple hours or a few hours. So that's the last time I slept. Hmm. I guess I've been up for, like, 24 hours now. Um... It's 7.30, so... Yeah. Um, and that's how, like, I'll... Like, a lot of people, when they say that their sleep's fucked up, it's because they've stayed up a little bit too late at three days in a row, and now they can't go to bed before midnight when they used to go to bed at 10 p.m. And, like, exactly. that's what they're saying I'm... is, like, every shit's fucked up, yo, and <laughs> your, yours is, like... I think more has to do with the medication, than I thought before. Um, uh, I'm taking mood stabilizer now, and that's supposed to help those cycles. And um, and I was like, wait, I haven't had those feelings of like mania of being productive, getting things done. I was like, oh fuck, they took that away from me. I think that's <laughs> what the medication's goal is. Um, but at the same time, like it's not. It's supposed to help. It's not bringing the depression up into the mid level either. Like, yeah. like it should be doing both at the same time. I think, I, I think that's at least part of what's going on is the new medication. Mm. <laughs> so, Trevor, whose birthday it is today, by the way, and I have not texted him. Oh, this will be the first time ever, and I'm having feelings about that. It's all stupid. It, 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 but Trevor, uh, are you gonna make it? Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have feelings about it. Good for you. Because there's something. Oh God. Okay. There's something to be said for n- not doing something that I have always done, or at least have yeah. for the last twelve years. Yeah. Means something is over. Yeah. Oh right? fuck. And, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Anyway. I don't want to talk about, <laughs> about him. I mean, I, I do. I'll, I'll talk about him. But, um, uh, you know, we, we, we put him in the hospital twice for suicide. And um, that's on top of all of the times that he hurt himself or threatened to. And uh, so there's a certain amount of like PTSD about all of that. (laughs) And I'm never quite sure with you how much of that is like actually Trevor shit 
or how much of mm-hmm. it is like objective and real and maybe just because mm-hmm. what you're doing is scary and it's a rational, reasonable reaction to it. Mm-hmm. So when, uh, when, when you like full on disappear hard and it can happen, uh, that's always like, that's where my head goes. That's where my, that's where my brain goes. It's like when my, and I, I checked you out for bruises when you got in the car today. Hmm. And like, I wondered about like, I even had the fantasy, um, over the weekend, I guess it was of like, how long would it take to find Kyle's body? Like in, in this pandemic, in this like, situation if if he if he was to end his own life like how long would it how much of your face would Reynolds have eaten (laughs) (laughs) he would lick me (laughs) to the bone um no I think that's a fair yeah like I so okay I've realized that suicidal ideation is definitely like something that comes up and I've become a little bit less worried about it the more I've learned about not less worried about it. I mean, like, but the idea of thinking about suicide is a terrifying idea, but like suicidal ideation, like it it just pops in my head. Like that's one of the signs that I know I'm more depressed. Like I, I, when I'm feeling better, it's like, Oh my God, I don't have to think about like killing myself every five minutes. Like that's pretty cool. Like, oh, the last time I thought about, like, shooting myself in the face was earlier this morning instead of five minutes ago. Like, that's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all, it's almost like the, like, those times where I'm, like, doing a lot better. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, it makes it that much more difficult to go back to being depressed because, and I'm, I'm starting to learn now Well, I was until recently, like I've been starting to learn with the cycles that like, great, I'm feeling good. Not going to last hmm. this too shall pass in a weird, in the opposite way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just, Because I, I also I want to I want to like I want to validate like you've been you've been w- w- way better I think in general and especially better about talking about it and mentioning it and I think some of that's the podcast in fact <laughs> like so. like yeah. you've been sort of forced out of your comfort zone on that but that also I already know you really well but that like that like makes it even more undeniable because like when you stop talking about it. Because you have been talking about it. something has shifted, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. and it's I don't know what I like. That's the the thing that really helped me the most is, but I I don't know how to deal with it. I don't think I've told you this is like on a form that I was filling out for my like therapist or something. One of it was it was talking about suicide and like asking all these questions about it, and one of them was like, why do you consider it or what do you, what, what would your goal or intention or whatever be out of it? And the biggest thing for me is letting people know how bad it is, which that's the thing that people say, like, oh, you just want attention. Mm-hmm. And I've been thinking about that phrase a lot. And it's like, maybe that's fine. <laughs> like, maybe people need it. It's like, anyway, but I'm, I'm really bad at that. Like, there's sometimes where I'm like, if I told people, like, the honest thoughts and, and whatever, like they, that would under not, then people would understand like what it really feels like to have depression, but I don't, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to do. And it's particularly hard to do when I'm feeling really bad. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that I don't like, I think no one cares about me. I think I'm not worth like, even if someone were to try to, like, help me, I'm not worth it. Like, it... I, it sucks. Like, I, it's just... It sucks. Like, I... I like... <sighs> so, is there... Um, there's that 
like depressed emotional part of me that can think sometimes <laughs> nothing I do matters mm-hmm. or has value or but there's like a, there's a thinking rational part that can say you know that's not true right and the emotional part of me when I'm in it will say fuck you no <laughs> um like and it almost makes it worse right like like th- thinking to myself but look at all of these things that are positive look at the people that care about me look at the the things that i can do or have done that like listing those things off and then still feeling worthless yeah. like makes it feel <laughs> even worthless sir <laughs> <laughs> um what 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 I what I want to circle back back to is just asking like is do do you have that rational voice that challenges those things or I mean I, I like I have to because I'm still alive for some reason <laughs> like I, something I'm doing is making me keep being alive so I think so like uh, it is particularly hard with friendships like I actually just texted Agassi this like the other day. I was like, I feel like all I do is ask of my friends and don't give back. Like, I, I just feel like I'm taking and taking and taking from all my friends and they always have to, like, watch out for me and have to help me do things. And it's very hard for me to rationalize. And that's probably why I don't reach out to my friends, because it's hard to rationalize. I feel like a, yeah, I don't know. It feels like everyone has to put in a lot of work for me. And it just feels unfair. I, it is unfair that you feel that way. <laughs> but, well, but, well. But, but, like, uh, being your friend is often frustrating <laughs> because of what you're illustrating here. Huh. That, like, I. I, I care about you and you're one of my people and like the fact that you feel like that's unreciprocated or unfair or it like it's um given 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 how much time I spend with you, it doesn't feel <laughs> like that. But do you is it does it compute for you at all that talking to you, trying to support you, um, that, 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 that is, that is better than not like as the person, as the person that's trying to do those things, that it's, it's better or easier than not. Like, like, when I can see you're watching you struggle when you're not asking for help or not talking about it when you've collapsed in on yourself, that's harder than what we're doing right now. Like, yeah, but it wouldn't be hard if you, but I do that. I'm going to probably keep doing that. Sure. And so it's going to keep being work then. Sure. Great. Sign me up. Wait, like I, I, <laughs> relationships are work, and our relationship and the work that goes into it has always felt worth it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's true. The past couple weeks, like, it's absolutely been like that. Everything is a struggle, which has, which means I haven't done any podcast stuff. Um, I just posted like the Patreon thing a week over a week late yesterday. Um, I actually have de- like, I pretty much what I do. And again, I think everyone thinks this, but it's like, 
I like I watch Grey's Anatomy all day. Most of the time while I'm on my phone. Candy Crush had this uh, weekend unlimited lives thing. Mm-hmm. It's weird that that tangibly affects my day to day life. <laughs> whether that has unlimited lives, they've done that a few times. Because the it, game doesn't make you put it down to, for some yes. time. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I exist with like media all the time. I am like, it's almost it's stupid. Like, it's almost like when I get up to go to the bathroom, I then play the podcast that I'm listening to. So I can, that two minutes, or, I'm pooping. <laughs> That's 15 minutes, or whatever. Like, so that I can listen to a podcast. And then I come back, I pause it, and then I keep playing TV. And it's just, like, yeah. I, I've i been able to get out of that in the past, like, and actually do productive things, and still watch TV, and still play Candy Crush, or whatever. But recently, it's, like, it has been My Brother, My Brother, Me, Grey's Anatomy, Candy Crush. That's what I do. Do you want to get out of that? Yeah. Like, that's... Okay. So... But that's the thing, like... That, what do you think it's about? Is it just is it just oppression? Is it <laughs> is it about comfort? Is it about escapism? Is it about... Yes. All well, of those, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely... I, th- I think it's depression and escapism. Like, I think that... This almost like goes to what I like about TV is when I'm when I'm watching other people's <laughs> drama. I don't. It's I. I am not myself right now. I am uh, Meredith Grey needs to you know clean out this kidney and put it back in some dude's <laughs> what's this episode. <laughs> Just quick pulled out a bad kid and cleaned it up or whatever and put it back in. I think there was more. Take a vegetable scrubber to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not in my head then. I am. I get to be involved in their trauma and, and their problems. And luckily their problems have a natural resolution. <laughs> Good or bad. Um, so it, I've actually gotten to the point this is new, where even when I'm feeling super shitty, I still take my medication. I at least have enough logic in me now to say, you don't want to do anything. Okay, fine. At least take your pills. Like the, and, and in the past being depressed, I've, it's a small thing. It barely takes any time, but I'm like, this doesn't matter. So, Um, when you, um, when you are in your head, instead of whatever Karev is doing, um, <laughs> just being sexy and punching people, <laughs> <laughs> um, like what, what's, what's, what's in there, right? Like, is that, I've, uh, it's just been this past week that I realized how like quarantine has like affected me. Cause in the, like before this, I've been like. I have social anxiety. I don't have a job. I ha- I live alone with my dog. Like, I am built for this. Like, this is what I do. Like, mm-hmm. I avoid people and, like, lay on the couch all day. It's like, all the time. Like, this is my jam. And only recently I've realized, like, oh, my God, like, I'm so in my head all the time that, like, yes, the video chats help, but, like, but... Like, I don't, I'm, I'm just always in my head. I'm like, it's always just this bubble of me and what I'm thinking and all the things I'm fucking up. It's so hard to pull yourself out of that when you, when it's not, when I don't have like a, I'm leaving my place. I'm going to play D and D and I'm going to be there with friends for three hours. Even though we play like on the thing, like, yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, I just, it doesn't. I'm still in my place. I'm still, I like, I am like when I'm with other people, I have to be there and present when I'm on a video thing, 50% of me has to be there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Are you getting any of the like stir crazy kind of things? Like you work from home before. So that part isn't new, but 
Um, I mean, it, it, it comes and goes, which I think is true for everybody. And it's, um, when I'm in an okay mood, things are okay. When I'm in a bad mood, I, I want to punch Chris in the face <laughs> or I want to, um, I have fantasies about like just hopping in the Jeep and driving <laughs> to Montana. <laughs> um, I get mad about like, I just want to go to Mad Pub and have a beer. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, there's part of me that still hasn't accepted that like, <laughs> that's not an option. Like is throwing a fit like a four year old that I can't go out and play. <laughs> and I got something that happened recently is like I I can't just pretend like this is spring break. Like this is not a week long vacation where like you know, you can disconnect and then come back and and I'll keep going. Like this is long enough that like I need to I can't just wait for the end of this to then start being a person again. Like I need to figure out, okay, in this current environment, in this setup, if I am like this for three more months, how do I deal with that? What do I do? Yeah. And I think, although then again, I was doing better with, like I was doing fine with that. I've had so many, like not have a job or be at home kind of experiences and, earlier this year I was like doing better with it. Like I was actually being super productive and achieving things. And I even told, I was telling everyone like, oh, I almost feel like I have a job. Like just, I work on the podcast. I do my writing. I do like, I have enough things that I do that I'm like, I almost feel like I'm filling a day with work quote unquote. And so, yeah, it's not just, it's not just since being quarantined. There's like, all of this then, like, then I start thinking about the medication. I'm like, is this just the medication? Like, I've been on the medica medication for about a month. And I thought of a million different things. And then was like, I'm taking a brand new medication that I started about a month ago. And in the past couple weeks, things have been a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would map out to be that is a contributing factor. If not a major factor if not the factor yeah what yeah let's do <laughs> wine uh, over the recording equipment that seems smart I'm sorry I should have done something is it just like maybe it's just all the medication and I need to like get out of like stop thinking about all this other shit I mean that's impossible but like I always blame myself before any external factors so like Maybe this is just the medication. Well, I mean, I think, I think, I think there's layers, right? Like at the very basic fundamental layer, <laughs> I'm going to talk about me instead of you, but <laughs> you can, you can hear the pronoun you instead of the word I. <laughs> uh, I'm real good at that. Uh, at a fundamental biological level, I am broken. My, my brain is chemically, oh, has, okay. has issues. <laughs> and that hurt most. Wow. Okay. And, and, um, I'm ADD and suffer from certainly seasonal affective disorder and sometimes bouts of depression. And so that, that's unfortunately the very first, the bottom layer. The next layer up is medication working on getting those things evened out chemically in my brain. Mm -hmm. Right. Everything else is after that. Yeah, yeah. The things you do, the things you don't do, the things you think about, the things you don't think about, the, the, like what you eat, what time you sleep, how long you sleep, going to the gym or less not. <laughs> or, <laughs> <laughs> um, like I'll get the answers to those questions. <laughs> Taquitos. <laughs> I don't sleep, and I'm not going to the gym, so that's pretty easy. Great. <laughs> I do keep buying taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I should buy some sour cream. That'd be nice to dip those. <laughs> yeah, that'd be legit. <laughs> Two ingredients. Okay. Okay. Should there be spray can sour cream? Mm. Like. 
Because well, <laughs> because because sour cream, like actual sour cream, you've got to like put it into something, and then use like oh, a utensil, then, yeah, or and then like you've got more dirty. Like if you just had a fucking can of sour cream that you could spray onto your taquito, you've messed no other dishes up. Okay, okay, this is, <laughs> this is like giving a blowjob to a guy with a giant dick because I almost threw up, but now I think I kind of like it. <laughs> Uh, what do I? I buy them. Oh wait, Dick! Remember that? Oh, <laughs> my poor Dick. <laughs> uh, I should pick something different than cookie dough to make. Like I've made that three times, and then I just bought more ingredients to make it again. And if I keep making cookie dough and eating cookie dough, that's not great. But uh, I don't. I mean, salmonella is one one problem with raw cookie dough potentially. That is but... the least of my life's con- <laughs> like I like that is such a small <laughs> to get. Wait, it can be fixed, right? Salmonella? Yeah, it can. I don't know. I just assume there's a cure for it. Is that how salmonella works? Or you just be sick for a while? I just assume it's fine. <laughs> like I just like yeah to get it. To get a solvable medical diagnosis of a thing that then I fix and it's done, like. Yeah, like the first time you get an STD and you're like, I just have to get a shot? Great. Great. <laughs> raw dick, raw dick. <laughs> um, I. It's so funny going into this. It's not at all funny. Like going into this, I was like, I haven't talked to my mom about this. I was like, I hate all the testing of medications, trying to figure out what's right. Like I, it's only just been now that I've feel like I've gotten to a place where I'm reasonably, I mean, I'm still testing things, but like the stuff I was on, like I, that's doable. Hmm. That's manageable. I can, I can have every other week. Like that's, that's to, you know, double the amount of time. That's not how doubling works. Anyway. Um, uh, but that was uh, two and a half years of taking all these medications to finally get to this. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but just like getting into the, like trying all the medications sucks because it's, you know, it's, I think the worst part about it is you know it's going to be shitty and that it feels shitty and it doesn't help that you know that. Like, right oh, what I'm going through could be solely due to the new medication that I take as it changes, you know, how you feel and think uh, as you adjust and figure out if it's right for you or not. But, like, when I'm sitting there depressed on my couch, I don't think, oh, this is the medication. Now I'm going to go be productive. I still feel shitty. Like, I still feel terrible, and I don't think about the medication is not the first thing I listed. Like, think about I think about all the other shitty things that I did. And like, think about all of the people who are like quarantined right now and they're on week six, seven, eight of being quarantined as fucking crazy as you are right now with that feeling. That's how long it takes medications to work sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like you can't change it. You're yeah. fucking stuck. You're, it's awful. And like, yeah, these things take time. And like, while the, it's taking its sweet ass time, life is happening. Yeah. And like, And all this, like, and the entire time, it's like, you know, if a medication takes 30 days, like, that's a lot of, like, a lot, 30 days is a lot of things I'm supposed to do, and person I'm supposed to be, and productivity I'm supposed to have, and, like, I mean, one day is a lot of a day to feel shitty, but, like, yeah. I mean, this is how, might just be one more example of what I already know. Like, I need to be, like, nicer to myself instead of jumping right to, like, oh, okay, well, I'm fucked up. And, like, you know, what are the other things going on? And right now, pretty much, I could probably say most (laughs) shitty feelings are probably the medication. Like, that's probably what happens when you change medication, especially if it doesn't work. It's the first one. 
And the fact that that took me weeks to get to, oh my God, if I had reached out to you and we had talked about it, maybe I would learn this earlier. Fuck, Mike, are you right? <laughs> yes. Uh, the, 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 no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, like, you, you, you couldn't, or you would have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and you did, and here we are. And that's... That's true. That's, that's true. And that's okay. That's true. I... Things have been shitty. I have felt bad. Also, eventually... I talked to you. <laughs> yeah. I also think that even on our darkest day, there is a kernel of the real us in there. That, like, there's part of you that's still you. There's part of you that is that spark of whatever makes you not just a sack of chemicals is is still present, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know, maybe you disagree with that, Like, but, yeah. but that's my... Uh, even at my absolute worst, there's still a little nugget in there that's me. Yeah, yeah. And what? What? And, and what if that's the problem? And what, and what if that's the problem? Maybe so. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I just trashed on whatever beautiful thing you were about to say. <laughs> mm. I mean, I do think, I do think for being, for being such an atheist, I do believe in like, I guess a soul that like, there's a, there's a, there's a person in here somewhere who's always here, no matter how shitty things are, no matter how awesome things are. And, uh, a lot of my frustration with like my life and what's happening and my mental health comes down to like thinking that that thing, that nugget, that whatever it is, deserves better. Hmm. Hmm. You know, the, something that you said to me that sticks with me all the time is the, like, just do three things and that's good enough. Yeah. Like, whatever, whatever three, just choose three things. It doesn't matter if it's just moving one thing yeah. from that pile over to that pile. If that's on your list of three things, that was good enough you are good enough today as a success. And, and that, that really sticks with me. I'm going to guess that you're not doing so well at that. No, <laughs> <laughs> unless those three things are watch one episode of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I really overachieved. Um, no, I, yeah, I need, I, I, I want to get back into doing that. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you're right. I, that was very helpful when I first learned it and first started trying it. You could start, today doing it ex post facto sort of out of the spirit of it but you're I you're, went you're here we're hanging out I went to the grocery store and I reached out to you great we're hanging out it's great do one more thing today was well my version not to okay. get too pedantic <laughs> be all mic about it let's hear it <laughs> my version had two things <laughs> so uh, so technically I'm done great <laughs> I was very relieved to see you today I think um, one of the things that's hard about quarantine is there is no substitution for like actually seeing a person but also yeah it's hard to like judge how someone's doing from like if I see you in person I know way better like way better than you know an hour long conversation on them. yep and uh I think I have a pretty accurate internal model of you, but um, I don't know. I, I worry about you, and it makes it slightly less worry or something. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I mean, no, but yeah. People who say, let me know if I can help are pussies. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs>
Because, th- like, most of the time people say that, and they're well-intentioned, mm-hmm. but there's a dot, dot, dot there of, like... But don't. <laughs> but don't. Or or the onus is on you, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And um, a slightly better but still sort of shitty way to put that is, is, is how can I help? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to say, but now I didn't know that was still kind of shitty. What's the, what's the it better? Is, it is still kind of shitty, oh. because that puts the, the, the onus on the person who might not be able to, mm. to come up with a way to make that person feel better mm. because they're helping, or mm. so, something. Um, just... Uh, I, I don't know. I want to help. I I want you to feel like it's okay to accept that help, and um, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know how, but I'm I'm willing to talk about it. Or I I'm trying to figure out the the like the non burden <laughs> some way. Like you don't have to make up some things that I feel good <laughs> about helping, but like. I also, like, if we can strategize about how to make you be less Less dumb. (laughs) I was going to say less dumb. (laughs) Um, That's funny. Like, I have, I am very bad at, like, trying to help other people feel better about me feeling bad. Yeah. My instinct, which is partly why I think then I say, like, oh, I don't, I want attention, suicidal ideation, because I want attention, because I don't tell people, like, I'm constantly trying to make people feel better about, oh, I'm feeling bad, but I'll always add, like, but I'm doing this, but I'm, I, but I just got back on my medication. Like, I I try to give people hope about me, which is a weird thing to do, um, realistically, Without not, like, not trying to like make up anything or um, being able to talk to you like this kind of thing is very helpful. So thank you. Like I mean, I yeah. Um, can we can we talk about the podcast real quick? Sure. Like, uh, we'll see what happens this week, and we legit in like over three years have only missed a handful of weeks and those weren't even because something happened right like like uh i forget all, all of the reasons not that we fucking need reasons it's our <laughs> show take a break whatever um and uh but like when you started letting podcast stuff go then i was like oh fuck that is actually a right. yes like I am usually able to force myself to do the podcast, to do editing, to sit down and record, to whatever. And I'm, I am glad that like this weekend when you're like, what can I do? Like I cannot record like being, and being able to tell you that. And then just Mike is going to know how to fix this. I like, I can't do this. And then, like, stopping that is very useful. Mm-hmm. Is, um... Like, should we, should we, should we stop for a while? Like, there's... There, nope. Like, okay. Uh, nope. And, and... and <laughs> like, if you were to say yes, I would, I would re- respect it and figure it out. And at the same time, think to myself... That's a terrible idea. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, and not not for the podcast sake, but for yours. Yeah, yeah, sake. yeah, yeah. No, right. that, yeah. Like, that's why I'm saying those because like it it gives me something substantial and tangible and whatever to to do. Yeah. So I don't. Know, I can't think. I I'll, I will let you know if anything else comes up. But but honestly, yeah, it's just helpful. To... And, and tacit permission to harass you is enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> but no, I. I'm very often reminded how cool it is that I would not say most of the stuff to anyone else. So thank you. 
Yeah. I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs>